All right, um, we're back in room two. Same team, guys. Say hi. What's up, guys? Hey. <laughs> Uh, we have the same team here in room two. We have a very interesting case, as you can see. Uh, we will let Brandon present the case if you guys want to put the slides up. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, another interesting case for you all. Uh, next slide. So we have a 61-year-old right-handed male with a history of left upper extremity arteriovenous malformation. He first presented with symptoms in 2001 yeah. with uh, pain that was radiating from his left shoulder to his forearm and also some uh, restrictions of mobility of the shoulder. Uh, the lesion, which was initially diagnosed as a hemangioma, was surgically excised in 2001, and his symptoms actually resolved for a time and until June of 2016 when he again developed limited range of motion and pain. Next slide. So when he initially presented to our office in... Uh, December of 2017, we obtained an MRI showing this uh, large tangle of vessels in the uh, left shoulder region with rapid arteriovenous shunting, consistent with the arteriovenous malformation. Next slide. So we actually took him to uh, for angiographic mapping and embolization in January of 2017. So you can see on the uh, left-hand side of your screen, the this was done through left radial access, and there's a large uh, nidus in the left shoulder region. Post embolization images are on the right hand side of the screen. We use Onyx 18, and there's definitely significant pruning of the abnormal vasculature. Next slide. So he was again seen in clinic for follow up in March. Uh, his symptoms significantly improved, but he did have persistent symptoms. So we again obtained an MRA, and you can see the, uh, sig there's still persistent significant arteriovenous malformation nidus in the left shoulder region. Next slide. So he was again taken for embolization in March of 2017 with the pre embolization images on the left post on the right, and you can see again we used Onyx 18 and there was significant printing of the vasculature after embolization. I'll just let that run through. Next slide. So again he presented in May of 2017, this month. Uh, his symptoms significantly improved again from the prior uh, episode, but persistent symptoms. And again an MRA was obtained that still shows this persistent vascular nidus in the left shoulder region. Uh, next slide. So in all in all, we have a 61-year-old male with a history of left upper extremity AVM with significant persistent lifestyle limiting symptoms status post two episodes of onyx embolization. Uh, current options for management include continued surveillance, surgical excision, and embolization. And one discussion point that we can, I guess, talk about is uh, the fact that we've accessed his left radial artery multiple times and uh, still okay. are successfully able to access it. Let's take a look at the wrist, and we'll show you what, what we have in here. This right here is a 6'5 six six glide sheath slender, which I like to use again because it's a five French hole and allows me to use a six French guiding catheter, which is what we did here. I actually just grabbed a very short, uh, since we're doing obviously ipsilateral arm axis, I grabbed a 65 centimeter Boston Scientific Mach 3. Uh, it's a six French guide, it's 070. <laughs> Here's my Guardian 2E. And then th all the way back here is a 155 centimeter 2.8 French uh, direction microcatheter. Uh, and that's, you know, actually we have a pretty long one here. We probably could have even used a shorter one. Here I have some water, which we're getting ready to do the glue injection. So let me show you what we've done so far. I just put up a 5 French straight flush catheter. And you can see this is a, it's a complex uh, AVM. There's a lot of feeders. We've already embolized several. Uh, we noticed on the on this first run that these images uh, sort of along the medial aspect of the shoulder fill a little bit later and they're more dilated. And so we said, why don't we just do a selective run of that inferior, inferior uh, brachii artery there. I believe that's what it's called. And we sort of put a Benson wire, just a soft Benson wire, and we actually hubbed our, our guide catheter and then we put the microcatheter through. And so this is our initial, our initial run through the guide. It sort of sits very nicely in there. And we have a lot of different feeders. We put our microcatheter up a little bit. And this is, the, this is one of my favorite microcatheters to sort of make these, these little turns around these, these corners here. It tracks very nicely. I think it works really well in getting through an AVM if you need to. And here's where we were initially. And we went a little bit further just to get closer to what we would potentially call the nidus. And uh, if you guys can... Take a look at this run here. This was where we stopped, I believe. Yep. 
given that it's not super high flow, uh, I'm thinking that we should use glue here. I think it'd be fast. We'll do maybe one or two injections of glue, and I think we'll be done. Why don't we go over to the glue table, and I'll show you how we mix it. So this is a nice little setup. You, you really need to keep this separate from your saline and your blood. Uh, mixing is really pretty simple. I don't use tantalum. It comes with tantalum. This is the uh, NBCA uh, tr true fill that comes packaged as one gram. And so what I usually do is just put it into a beaker. All right. And I already drew up a 6cc syringe of ethiodol. So the more ethiodol I put in here, the longer it will take to polymerize. And there's, there's kinetic curves that people have drawn. I generally think one second per cc is a good rule of thumb, but it's not exactly that. Um, so we're going to initially put in five. <laughs> <laughs> with a twist. And I usually just mix it with a, a stick. All right, so now I have these 1cc syringes. These are like TB, is that, is that correct? <laughs> Tuberculosis syringe? Um, I'm not going to inject a full syringe of this glue mixture because as you'll see, most of what we're going to inject is going to be water. So uh, Gaj and I were talking that we'll probably load the catheter maybe with 0.4. Aaron, are you going to inject water or are you thinking to inject D5? D5 water. Okay. <laughs> I guess I, I should have said that. And this is already preloaded. I already drew these up. This is all D5 water. And so depending on how fast we push, it, it may reflux, it may not, it may penetrate. And the general rule of thumb, here, let's, let's flush a little bit more. Yeah, have uh, one out here. Yeah. Uh, it, the general rule of thumb with, with glue, and, and, and glue is challenging to use, is that if it starts to reflux, you stop injecting and you pull your microcatheter back, if, if you can. Um, I like to keep it forward pressure on the 1cc medallion as we push it, as we push it with these sort of to create a nice stream, almost like a, um, like a lava lamp, I guess would be a good description. I guess this is analogy day. What's gonna ultimately happen is when we start pushing it with D5, as you'll see in a few minutes, it'll start to form little globs of glue. <coughs> um, and so it doesn't exactly become 0.4 cc's. It's probably gonna be more like a cc or even more. Loaded. Catheter is loaded. Catheter is loaded. All right. So he's going to try to create a nice little stream. Hopefully it won't reflux. If it refluxes, we'll just stop. Keep it going. Keep it going. That's exactly what we wanted. Yeah, it's nice. Keep it going. Get another syringe. Yeah, the one thing you have to be careful, it's, even though it's not, it looks like it's set, it's actually not polymerized. You can actually still push it forward. You can see here as he pushes it. There's always a little extra in the, in the uh, catheter here. Yeah. And so we really want to start to flush very aggressively. And so the one thing that I like to do, and this is another reason why I use a guide, just in case I get a little glue. You see, there's a little bit of glue stuck on there. We're going to try to get it off. Yeah. And you see some of it sort of went into that other branch there, which is okay. But there's a lot in there. So it's not always exactly what you injected. I mean, there's going to be more, especially when you put the water in. All right, we're good. Yeah, you we're can good. see it's starting to push forward even though. So, it, you know, I don't like to do hard runs at this point. What, we'll, what we might do now is to see where we're at before we take the microcatheter out is to do a little run through the guide. Gentle. This thing loves to get new feeders. So this is one of those, uh, you know, where's that one coming off of? That's the one that was more proximal mm -hmm. that we haven't treated. Yep. Okay. Sometimes with glue, you got to switch your microcatheter. So, you know, we, one direction. we, well, let's just get some more water and we'll flush it. We're going to do another run. We'll probably do one more vessel and then we'll be done. Okay. Um, do you guys want to see anything else with this case or uh, come back later? I think we'll come back later. All right.